today we're going to be looking at how to avoid the financial stress of spending too much at Christmas and starting January in debt. Um, and with just 80 days left until Christmas now, we do need to start planning. It's all about the preparation. So to set the context, according to the Bank of England, in a normal month, a typical household in the UK spends around two and a half thousand pounds a month. But in the run up to Christmas, our spending habits change dramatically and the typical household will spend an additional £800 in just December alone. But it's not just December we overspend. Most of us start Christmas shopping in November because we've got events such as Black Friday and Cyber Monday. It's tempting us to buy gifts earlier. But a quarter of us have bought some Christmas presents before September. Um, and what's actually been found by research, unfortunately, is that nearly a quarter of us have to take out a loan to cover the Christmas overspend and more than half of us put Christmas on credit cards to pay off later. And of course, that just adds to that January hangover. So we're going to cover a few things in the next 25 minutes just to help reduce that money stress. We're going to go through setting a Christmas budget then we're going to look at some general money saving tips then saving money on Christmas food and also reducing the cost of travel. Then we're going to look at the really important thing, preparing for Christmas next year. Mad, you might you might think, but uh, you'll find out why. And then we'll finish off uh, where we can access some Christmas magic for free. Um, now, as I go through, I should stress that I am going to be mentioning companies and websites along the way. Um, but Better With Money is not in any way affiliated with these companies. We don't receive any financial incentive for mentioning them. We just think that they provide good services that offer uh, value for money that you can take advantage of. OK, so the first thing we should all be doing for this Christmas, if we haven't done it already, is to write ourselves that list of who we need to buy for, um, as well as budgeting for things like decorations, food, drink and going out as well. So just an example there on the slide as to what your list might look like. Of course, everybody's is going to be different. But of course, at this stage of the year, if we haven't already saved the money to pay for Christmas, it's actually just about making sure we try to keep it affordable without sliding into too much debt um, and then thinking about what can we actually do to plan ahead properly for Christmas 2022. So just start by writing a list of everything that you can think you're going to need to spend and work out a plan of how you're going to pay for it. Can you afford it out of your monthly pay? Have you got savings that are going to cover it? Or do you need to find another way of financing it? And before you answer that, let's look at some money saving tips that might be able to help you to get that Christmas budget down. So first of all, think about cutting down your Christmas present list. You know, are there people who you think might be just as relieved as you if you agree not to buy presents for each other this year? Um, I'll give you an example. So at Christmas, we always have my parents and my husband's parents for Christmas Day. And every year, my parents would phone me up saying, I don't know what to buy for the in-laws. And the in-laws would phone me saying, I don't know what to buy for your parents because they're all in their late 70s. They don't really want anything. So all that happened was they ended up with tins of biscuits or candles that they didn't really need or want. So a couple of years ago we had one quick conversation between both sets of parents and they both really quickly agreed not to buy presents for each other so everyone's happy we spend the day together but each couple has probably reduced their Christmas spend by 30 pounds just on that those that one set of people um, I've also agreed with my close friends that rather than buying presents you know we have an evening we watch Christmas films we have a bottle of wine and some nibbles and that's far more enjoyable and again reduces that present cost so just have a think is there anybody you know who might be happy to to come off your present list you might also want to consider Secret Santa so that is where you have a group of people you all agree a present budget and then you pull a name out of the hat for the person that you're going to buy for. So let's say you've got a group of eight. You've only got to buy one present then rather than eight. And then you can all rest assured that no one's going to spend more on you and vice versa because that budget has been set. And that can be really useful, not just for work colleagues, but families too. You know, I know plenty of families who use this approach for the adults in the family. And, you know, in that way, you can set a relatively high spending limit, but still spend less than if you were buying all those separate presents. Um, it works really well. And if you can't pull pieces of paper out of a hat, particularly if you don't all live close by, you can use an online generator. You've got Sneaky Santa there, but there's plenty of them if you Google. And then as ever, when you're looking at reducing costs, make sure that you are making the most of those discounts available to you. Now, some of you might have shopping discount or reward schemes that you get through work. If you don't, look at things like voucher codes. 
But one of the very easiest ways to look for discounts is to set up a facility like honey.com. Now, if you haven't heard of it, Honey is a free internet browser extension that automatically finds and applies coupon codes at the checkout. You do have to register for the service and you have to allow that extension to be added to your internet browser on your computer or your phone. But then whenever you're shopping, if Honey finds a discount, a pop-up appears um, at the checkout with an orange button for you to apply that coupon. So no longer do you have to hunt around for the voucher codes or discounts, it is all done for you. And the other thing I love about Honey is that particularly if you're on Amazon, at the checkout, it will tell you whether that item has been cheaper in the last 30 days. So on the slide there, you'll see a screenshot of, uh, that was a couple of days ago, I searched for the Amazon dot and it told me that there's been a price increase uh, recently and it showed me that the lowest price uh, that's been on there of £20.82 um, and when it could be found. So really do take a look at that if you haven't got that already. And the other thing uh, to take note about the discounts is that if you find them at the moment, it might be worth taking them now. I mean, we all know that there are supply chain issues at the moment. We've got shortage of lorry drivers. And according to the British Retail Consortium, this could lead to a shortage of items on our shelves. Um, so, you know, bargains available now might not be available later. But please, I'm certainly not condoning panic buying. I'm just saying that if you find something that you need for Christmas at a discounted price now that you're willing to pay, just consider getting it just so that you make sure you get what you want at that reasonable price. Um, also, uh, something I saw yesterday, Tesco have just started its 50% off uh, toy sale for club card members. So again, if you haven't looked at that and you've got lots of toys to buy, take a look at the Tesco website. You can also watch out for the Black Friday and the Cyber Monday deals, and that's where many items um, are reduced in price. And this year, the dates for Black Friday and Cyber Monday are the 26th and the 29th of November. Um, but many retailers will start their offers earlier. Now, the best deals on these days are normally found on the big ticket items. So the things like TV, laptops, tablets. Um, but again, make sure you've got a, an extension like Honey just to see whether you're getting a good deal or not, because something that looks like a good deal might not be because the retailer just infl inflated the price a little time beforehand. Then number four on the list, see what cashback facilities you've got available to you. Some of the major banks have got cashback reward sites that you can use if you've got a bank account with them. You do have to log into that reward site and then access the shop's websites from there to claim that cashback. Um, but, uh, you know, if you don't get access through um, your bank account, you could also get access through a work facility or you could look at topcashback.co.uk, which is the most popular one um, that we have. Now, I just thought I'd mention one that I use. That's Utility Warehouse. Now, I have my gas and my electricity supplies through Utility Warehouse. And because of that, I qualify for a cashback card and I can preload it with money. Then every time I use that cashback card, the cashback I get actually gets offset against my energy bills. And I regularly save about £20 a month by doing that. Um, you know, and that's likely to be more on the run up to Christmas as I'm spending more. However, with cashback, you need to think of it as a bonus. It isn't guaranteed because cashback sites are easy to set up. Many smaller businesses that have done it have gone bust. And if that happens, you've got little protection. So that's why if you've got cashback facilities through work or the larger companies like Utility Warehouse, that might be a better idea. And of course, you know, we all know we should shop around. Now, there was some research done by Money Saving Expert, and that's shown that Google shopping is the most consistent at finding the cheapest price. So if you are looking for something, it might be worth doing it through that website. Um, it will show you a list of stores where you can buy the item you're looking for. It will show you the price, um, where's the cheapest. And of course, you can see the Google reviews as well. Now, lastly, on this slide for money saving tips, it's just about getting creative. I'm not necessarily meaning getting out your paintbrush uh, and painting someone a picture, although that would be a wonderful present. Uh, but for many of us, we've got thousands of photos on our phones um, and we could use those as really thoughtful and low cost presents by getting them printed off for free using services like those offered by Photobox. Now with Photobox, you can get 50 free prints a month. You just pay the postage, which is somewhere between £1.49 and £3.99. You can also get posters printed for £5.99 or photo journals for £15. So as you can see, you might already have something that can provide a really, really good low cost gift for somebody that they'd appreciate. 
And talking about presents, that brings us on to the Christmas present do's and don'ts. Now, first of all, always pay with a credit card if you can, if the purchase is over £100. Um, Sadly, we know that retail firms do go bust. And if that happens and your purchases haven't arrived or they have arrived and they're 40, you will have some protection if you've paid by credit card. The Section 75 laws means that if you're using that card, even if you've only paid for part of that item using that credit card, then that company is jointly liable for the whole amount. So you would just need to contact the credit card uh, company to claim in that instance um, that I said earlier, if the firm you've bought from has gone bust. Now, Section 75 doesn't apply to purchases under £100, but if you have paid for goods on a credit or a debit card um, for purchases under that amount, you can ask your bank or card provider to reclaim the cash from the seller's bank as long as you start that process within 120 days of realizing there's a problem so again if you had a smaller purchase it hadn't turned up you can't get hold of that company or they've gone bust you can go through your bank that's called chargeback and you can find more details and a guide of how to do that on the money saving expert website the next thing to definitely do uh, when you're buying christmas presents is to ask for gift receipts Now, legally, only the person who bought the gift has rights, so the recipient can't legally exchange. However, as we know, many shops totally ignore that and they will exchange items. But just to be on the safe side, do ask for a gift receipt, because if they give you one, it does suggest that the store is willing to deal with the person you're giving the present to rather than you as the buyer. Now, the first don't on here is beware of gift cards. Um, Again, you know, we've said large retailers, let's think of an example like Debenhams, have gone into administration in recent years. And when this happens, they usually stop accepting gift cards altogether. And there's very little you can do about that to then get your money back. You should also be aware that with some gift cards are admin fees. There are companies who will begin reducing your balance if you don't use that gift card within a certain time frame. One example of that is the provider One for All. They actually take 90 pence a month from your balance um, if you've had that card for longer than 18 months. So do watch out for that. You know, and of course, with the gift cards, people can lose them. They can forget not to use them. You know, and they can go past the expiry date. So taking into account everything I've just said, think actually cash might be better. It could be a good alternative to gift cards. However, if you do still want to buy a gift card, there are some multi-shop gift cards, ones like Love to Shop, which means that you can use them at other retailers if one of the shops within the group uh, do go bust. So just getting back to our original point there at the bottom, if you can, try to stick to what's affordable for you when buying presents and take advantage of the money saving tips uh, that we've spoken about. Because overdrafts are now a very expensive way of borrowing money. Many banks are going to charge you up to 40% interest for using that facility. Um, And putting purchases on credit cards, if you can't pay them off in full, you're going to be paying between 20 and 40% interest on any balances left over. Now, if you feel you you haven't got savings for this Christmas, you you have no choice um, but to pay for Christmas on a credit card and you can't pay it off, then think about trying to transfer any outstanding balances to a 0% transfer balance deal where the outstanding amount has no interest applied for a set period of time. Now, if you've got a good credit score at the moment, there are some 0% transfer deals out there for up to 20 months, which means that you can spread the repayments of Christmas over that period without paying any interest so that you can pay it off before that interest rate then shoots up again. But before you do that, If you are going to apply for a 0% balance transfer, please use an eligibility checker. Most of the credit card companies have got them on their sites just to make sure that you're going to be approved for that 0% balance transfer before you apply. Because if you do apply and you're turned down, that is going to damage your credit score. But please, that is a last resort. It's far better not to spend the money you don't have in the first place um, if you don't have to, just by trying to reduce your present list and making the most of the discounts that you've got available. Now, the next part of Christmas we can all definitely cut costs on is food. So try to set yourself a food budget that you can stick to just so that you can avoid any further overspend. Now, the easiest way to do that is to write a meal plan because that then stops us, you know, the temptation of those food promotions as we go around the shops. According to the Money Advice Service, you're 60% more likely to keep to your food budget if you write that plan and you stick to it. 
Um, if you want uh, an idea of a meal planner, we've got one on the Better With Money website. You're most welcome to use it. You can go onto the employee resources section and download that for free. Um, and again, you know, just a reminder, make the most of vouchers that you have. If you haven't got any through work, things like voucher codes will give you the very latest food saving offers. But you may also want to cash in some of the loyalty points that you've built up this year. You know, Boots have loyalty points. Tesco's have loyalty points. Now, Tesco's actually allow you to become a Christmas voucher saver um, if you've got their club card app. And that's where they will save up all of your vouchers and they will give them to you in November ready for the Christmas period. And they also sometimes promote double points around Christmas too. Um, I've just used some of mine yesterday um, because building up points then helps you to save for the, for the next Christmas while you're at it. But just a word of warning about the Tesco vouchers uh, to use that to reduce your food shopping. You actually get far better value from the Tesco ones if you exchange them for the restaurants or the days out vouchers because you get three times the worth of the vouchers. So actually, you could just use those Tesco vouchers to help you with your Christmas going out bill. If you know you're going to a restaurant that's within their re reward scheme, see if you can change your vouchers now. You might also want to look at a couple of food apps that can save you money. Firstly, we've got Olio there. That allows individuals and superstores to share any surplus food that they have for free. Um, to use the app, uh, just go on it. You can access free food items. You browse the listings uh, in the area near you, and then you arrange to pick it up. The other one is Too Good To Go. Slightly different from Olio in that food isn't free, but it is hugely reduced. Now, where I live, I live in Chelmsford in Essex, we've got both Morrisons and M&S that go on there and they provide magic food bags. And that's where you pay a third of the price of the goods um, and you go and you pick up the bag and it has things in there like the fruit and veg that they're going to have to throw out soon or things that are going out of date shortly. But it's all perfectly fine. You know, if it's stuff you can use, get it. You know, these apps are a lovely, lovely idea to reduce waste and you can help others and you can reduce your food, food bill at the same time. Um, also, you know, I've mentioned it a couple of times, but do take a look at the Money Saving Expert website. They've got latest wine deals um, at, at the time that you're looking. You can make a really big saving, particularly if you're buying in bulk. Um, you know, or don't be afraid if you're cooking for the family to arrange for your visiting relatives to provide things like the wine or cheese for Christmas Day. I mean, in our house, my parents buy the turkey, my in-laws buy the cheese, the crackers and the chocolate, all the things beginning with C, and we do the rest. Um, I was hoping, I've got three kids now who are over 18, I was hoping they might contribute, but I think, think that might be wishful thinking. Um, but lastly on here, Christmas food, because Christmas is all about goodwill and uh, giving, I thought I'd also mention the hunger site, which donates food to those in need. All you have to do to do that is go on their site and click the button that says click here, it's free. There is no catch. It is free. It's just that whilst you're on that site, you're going to see loads of adverts from sponsors. Um, but it's a win win. You donate food. Uh, the hunger site get good public relations. So do that. They've, they get about 87,000 clicks a day at the moment. Um, and they're aiming to donate 19 and a half million cups of food each year. Right. The next thing. Uh, that many of us do at Christmas is travel. We travel to see our friends and our family. And there's a few things you can do here to cut costs. Um, if you're going to be traveling by train, uh, see if you can book in advance, get reduced fares. Rail operators generally launch tickets 10 to 12 weeks before the day to travel, but the cheap tickets do tend to go quickly. So sign up, get your free alert with train line just to see when they do uh, go on sale. Even if you've left it late, don't assume you've missed out. Sometimes the train firms will have cheap advance tickets available before the day. However, advance tickets are non-refundable. If you can't travel for any reason, you won't get your money back, but you can change the date and time of the ticket, but sometimes there's an admin fee of around £10. So just weigh up, is it worth getting the reduced advance ticket saving, but I have the risk of no refund? The other tr uh, trick with train travel, which I'm sure most of you have heard about now, is train splitting. So instead of buying tickets for the whole journey, buy tickets for the constituent parts and you can cut the cost considerably 
and you don't have to get off the train as long as the train stops at the station that you split your journey to and from um, then you're sorted this is perfectly fine according to the national rail conditions uh, of travel um, train line do now do it automatically if you book tickets through them but they still are not necessarily the cheapest so I have put another couple of uh, train splitting companies here that you might want to look at like split my fare and split your ticket now if you are traveling by car uh, the first tip you can have is make your car more efficient. If your tire pressures are too low, this can actually increase the drag and it means that you're going to need more fuel to do the same journey as if the tire pressures were the correct for the load. So that one pound spent uh, at the petrol station to pump up your tires could more than save you that in fuel. And then talking of fuel, if I dare bring that up, if you can actually get some, fuel is heavy. So by filling the car up, you are adding a weight. So the less fuel your car has in it, the more efficiently it's going to drive. So if you don't have a long journey, think about just filling it up halfway to make your car run more, more efficiently. But of course, the easiest thing you can do to save money uh, is to find your cheapest petrol or diesel in your area. And you can do that by going on the petrolprices.com website. You just register, you enter your postcode, you tell the website how far you're willing to travel for fuel and what type of fuel you're after. And then it will send you an email every day telling you the cheapest filling station in your area. And that does cover most of the eight and a half thousand petrol stations that we have across the UK. And of course, using cashback cards um, and loyalty points for your petrol as well means you're going to save money in this area. So we've looked at a few ways then of which we can cut the cost of Christmas uh, this year, even if you haven't been saving across the year. But the best thing I can say to you, look, it's as soon as this Christmas is over, please start to think ahead for next Christmas, because it's a lot easier if you've got that time to budget and you can get uh, some planning in place. So first of all, start by looking at your bank statements on the run up to this Christmas just to see how much it really costs you. you now, include everything from tinsel to toys, the works Christmas party, so that you can get a true figure of how much you should be saving. Then divide that number by 10 and that will give you how much you should be saving between January and October to pay for your Christmas overspend next year. Then to see if you can afford to save that, you'll then need to get a good handle on your day-to-day -day budgets if you, if you haven't done that already. You know, what are your essential costs? What do you pay on going out? What do you pay on holidays? Now, we do have a budget planner um, as well as an interactive budget planner on our website. So you can print that off or go on the interactive one and fill it in. Because what you're hoping to find is that if your outgoings are less than your income every month, then theoretically you should have some disposable income that you can save for Christmas so that you don't get that Christmas hangover. But don't forget to include the costs that happen once a year. Um, you, again, you can use our, our yearly budget planner for that. Things like your car insurance, your MOT. Don't forget to include those costs when you're doing your annual budget. Um, and also see just if there's any unwanted costs that you've got, whether you've got un any unneeded subscriptions or whether you need to review your bills for a reduction. Um, I just want to give you this example. So there are six of us in our home. Our monthly gas and electricity bill is £200. I was talking to my best friend the other day. They have four people in their house and they are paying over £400 a month, which has really prompted her immediately to do a review. Now, if you are one of the people whose energy firms have gone bust and you're being moved to another provider, just wait until that transfer has happened and then review your energy at that stage. Um, but as I said, I'm with the Utility Warehouse and they are financially sound and they are still taking on new customers if you wanted to look at them. Of course, when you're budgeting, if you live with a partner, try to fill in your budget together because that means that, um, you know, you include both of your income, all of your outgoings and all of your debts so that you can make that Christmas budget together. Now, if you can decide that you can set some money aside uh, between January and October next year, one of the easiest ways to do that is use your piggy banking facilities, which are connected to our current accounts. Most banks offer this. It allows you to set up saving uh, pots within your current account. Um, you can call those pots what you want to, and it just allows you to transfer money easily over into those pots on a regular basis. 
All you're doing is earmarking this money. All it does is take the money out of the view of your bank balance. You're not actually physically transferring it anywhere else, but it's a fantastic way to meet those short-term goals like Christmas and to remove the need to, to reach out for the credit card. Um, these piggy bank facilities cost nothing. Obviously, you don't then need to remember more passwords. It's already within the tools. So do take a look at that. And of course, on the theme of planning ahead, take a look at the January sales too. Everything from gift wrap to Christmas cards, decorations go on, on sale after Christmas. And 48% of people buy at least one thing a year and ahead for Christmas to so see if that can be you. Now, we've spoken a lot about um, setting a budget um, for Christmas with the aim of not running into debt. However, if you do feel I'm already in debt, I don't know how I'm going to get through Christmas, it's going to make it worse. Please feel for, you know, that you can ask for help. Most struggle people struggle for two years before getting help um, and debt can really affect your mental well-being and it can affect everybody whether you're young or old. Now your first port of call should be the ICE BEM Fund and Support Network and I'm going to be showing their contact details at the end of the session. They provide emergency grants and debt advice and calls to these helplines are totally confidential. But if, if you didn't want to call them for any reason, there's a, quite a few debt charities out there. It's their job to help you for free. Many of them have got helplines. They give confidential advice and they give debt services. You know, they'll be able to help you get a plan in place to pay off your debt at a rate that's affordable to you. Now, to finish off today, I just wanted to share some Christmas magic for, for free. Things that we can do that don't cost anything that are going to get us in that Christmas spirit. So the first one, I'm really excited about this. On the 21st of December, we are all going to be able to spot a rare Christmas star because on this date, Jupiter and Saturn are going to form a double planet in the sky. And it's the first time it's going to happen in 800 years. They're going to come so close together that they might actually look like the star of Bethlehem. Um, the last time it happened was back in 1226. So cloud permitting, the star should be visible uh, low on the horizon about an hour after to sunset so go on to the bbc's uh, sky at night they're going to give you a full guide to observing it the next one is the website noradsanta.org this website launches on the 1st of december it's got games and videos all to do with christmas and you can watch santa deliver presents from christmas eve um, if you google it though you'll find lots of other santa trackers out there as well and then going back to reducing the cost of Christmas, rather than give a present, you could give a Christmas check for free. It could be babysitting for friends. It could be a car wash. It could be a foot massage. You can download a free uh, template there from the Money Saving Expert website. And then if you're looking for free events, go on to freeevents.co.uk. Loads of things on there from Christmas tree displays to fireworks to Christmas markets. And then lastly, there are lots of famous stars taking part in the story of Christmas, including people like Olivia Coleman, Judy Dench, David Tennant. They're all raising funds for charity. Um, but to watch it, you don't have to make a donation. It's going to be released on YouTube on Wednesday, the 16th of December, and it will stay there indefinitely. So lots of things there to get your Christmas magic for free. But lastly... You know, thank you to ICE and the support network for sponsoring this website today, uh, sorry, webinar today. Um, if you do need any help, here are their contact details. They provide financial workplace and wellbeing support to you and your families. Um, so please feel free to contact them if you need to. Right, Sarah, sorry, I've got one minute to go. Have we had any questions through? That's great. Thank you very much, Sarah. Some great tips there. And I'll be honest, I've uh, been guilty of tracking Santa on NORAD Santa for the last couple of years on Christmas Eve. <laughs> so I fully recommend everyone checks that out. Um, we've got a couple of questions. First of all, what are your thoughts on Christmas savings clubs such as Park? Would I be better off using a bank account to save for Christmas or is this OK? Yeah, so Park enables you to set up monthly savings uh, plan, but you get your money back in vouchers, which you can either then give to friends and family or you spend. Now, bearing in mind what I said about vouchers earlier, Sarah, you know, the fact that firms could go bust um, and actually people can lose vouchers. I would actually say using the, the piggy bank facilities within your bank account is probably a far safer option. I mean, I get that it's a lot easier to spend if it's still there in your bank account, but using vouchers isn't ordinarily a good idea. If you are going to use a savings club like that, please make sure that they are a bona fide company and they're not about to go into administration. That's great. Thank you. And are Black Friday sales really the best time to buy for Christmas? 
Yeah, interesting. So I said, didn't I, we've got um, Black Friday on the 26th of November, Cyber Monday on the 29th. And on average, in the UK, we spend about £220 each at those sales. Um, It is a bit of a scammer's uh, dream in that you have to be really careful. People do attempt to set up fake websites, so be careful of that. Um, All I would say is that at those sales, you know, if it is the big ticket items, you can get some really good deals. Um, but please download that Honey app just to see whether you really are getting a good deal or with actually they just inflated the price the day before. So, yes, you can get them, but they're not always going to be the best deals. Sometimes you can get them outside of those days as well. That's great. Thank you. And one more. I like to give to charities at Christmas, but I'm wary of scams and being handed for money later on in the year. Is there a way to give money safely and securely? Yeah, if you're going to give um, to charity at any time of year, not just Christmas, please check that um, one on the literature, there is the charity's name and registration number, anything that you receive. And then go on to the gov.uk website and they've got a charity register because then you can make sure that who you're donating to is a real charity. And um, they will be listed on there if they've got an annual income of more than £5,000. Now, if you're getting emails from charities, just be careful before you click on any links. Um, Again, just like scams, there might be fake links in there taking you to fake websites. So again, if you get any emails, check that that charity really does exist on the charity website, um, on on the charity register, sorry, and make sure you're not clicking any links that aren't safe. Um, If you're giving to charity in the street, just make sure that that street collector is wearing a proper ID badge um, and that collection tin is sealed and undamaged.